I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making, you know, and nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. Now, let's move forward. I'm going to move forward. We're going to get into Atlanta news, okay? We have a few clips highlighting what's going on in Atlanta. Y'all know that I'm Atlanta girl for right now until I get back to Newark. I'm Atlanta girl right now. And we always talk about the corruption and the things that's going on in Fulton County. But today, we're going to update you guys on what Governor Kemp did with his crookedness but he tried to you know what i'm saying when election come try to do something good and he you know he a republican he trying to get fanny willis ass out of here okay we're gonna talk about fanny willis tonight you know a little bit of updates on what's going on they still are on her like fire and honestly i think she put herself in the hot seat we're gonna get into that <clears throat> she set her own self up she should have just sat down, mind her business, and clean her prisons up. Georgia enacts law letting pe um, penal, uh, penal punishment out prosecutors. So Georgia Brian Kemp, Georgia government Brian Kemp has signed a bill into law creating a new commission and power to discipline and remove Wayne Word prosecutors. <clears throat> so basically, he uh, set up a prosecution, a board to review the prosecutors. Atlanta AP government Governor Brian Kemp signed a bill into law Friday. This was um, actually May fifth because it wasn't. It was a proposal at first. So now it is the law. Fannie Willis, somebody's gonna get investigated. Okay, round round. Grace Levi gonna have a commission to report these crooked prosecutors to. Come around, find out. I don't care, baby. I had one that I wanted to report a couple years ago. Hmm. Is it a statute of limitation on the shack? I'm feeling excited because they're crooked. Okay. Crooked. But I'm moving forward. Government Brian Kim said, we know he signed it on Friday, creating a new commission empowering to discipline and remove wayward prosecutor, saying it will crumble fair light, far left prosecutors who are making our uh, communities less less safe. It shouldn't be about far left. It should be about all the crooked prosecutors. Don't give a damn what side you on far left, right, or middle. Okay? If you're not for the people, you're doing crooked stuff, you need to get out. You see that political nonsense? I don't like that. Kim made the remarks at the Chatham County Community uh, <clears throat> County Sheriff Office in Savannah, where he signed the measurable establishing the measures establishing the prosecution attorney qualification commission which will launch, launch July the 1st and start accepting complaints on October 1st. That's too long. That's about five more months. Shit. The person probably retired by this time. He says, I am going to stand idle by as rogue or incompetent prosecutors refuse to uphold the law. I will not. Kemp said, today we are... Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Wait a minute. Tiffany here, you done put dirt in my throat. <laughs> so, I'm telling you, I don't trust her. I'm making videos about that crazy ass witch. All of a sudden, it was like, <coughs> I start, <coughs> I'm just playing. Okay. Now, anyway, <laughs> getting back to the subject. Y'all know I ain't got no behavior. Basically, what he's saying, he's not going to stand by idle as these incompetent prosecutors. Don't uphold the law. You know who he's talking about, allegedly. Today, we are sending a message that will not uh, forfeit public safety for prosecutors to let criminals off the hook. 
Okay. The law parallel punishments for removing prosecutors in Florida, India, Missouri, and Pennsylvania, as well as border de of deputies nationwide over how certain criminal offense should be charged. Okay. All right. Y'all know how I am. I got to see things on both sides. First and foremost, this is opening to way to more states, way to way more than one state. All right. Two is make me a little nervous because it's like how certain criminal offense should be charged. Some people are very draconian and tyrannical. And sometimes you have some prosecutors that be like, hey, I, I'm not, you know, this is not really a need for it. Let me give you an example. Just something pretty simple. The prosecutors here out in this stupid county right here. My daughter had her first ticket. No, that's a damn lie. She had got a car accident and then got a ticket right afterwards. Mm. But she was 17, going to 18. They gave her the ultimate punishment. It was no if, ands, or buts about it. She showed she was a student. She, you know, could she get a little break? She was working. They said hell to the gnaw gnaw. Now, I find that very appalling because it was so harsh even though that wasn't really her first offense, but it was kind of, you see what I'm saying? So to measure everyone specifically at the same level is what makes me nervous to say how Pacific charges. Okay. There could be two people who murdered somebody, but one can did it out of self-defense because they was being attacked. One could have did it just out of murderous ideations, but if they have to be applied the same way, just because it falls under the same category, that is a problem. Okay. Okay. I don't like that across the board. Everybody is treated the same. That's how we got into that situation a couple of years ago. Okay. And we all was just getting poked and stoked. Shh. They're coming out with a 12th one. Okay. If you're taking a 12th one, good luck. Now, <clears throat> Georgia Democrats. See, my throat start itching again. Hinger, leave me alone. I rebuke you, devil. I rebuke you. Okay. I know it's her. Why the hell my throat itching? My throat don't never be scratchy. It's like dust going in with this. <sighs> Shit. Excuse my language. All right. So Georgia De Democrats um, strenuously oppose these measures, says the Republic's legislative majority who seeks another way to impose its will on Democrat vote voters. So I strongly oppose this excessive and unnecessary commission as a district attorney are already upheld to accountable un uh, accountability under existing laws and through the current democratic process of holding elections. All right. And this was Deborah Gonzalez, a democratic uh, district attorney. Now, as I stated, I gave y'all my opinion on this. I do think that prosecutors do need to be checked. They knew the check and balance system and these commission better be open to the public because I want to write a letter. Hopefully that prosecutor didn't retire. The judge did already. But you know, I'm still thinking about it. But with those, um, with that being said, I do think that this is a good idea. But if this board is going to measure how all cases is supposed to be applied across the board, that's going to be a problem. I think judges should have discernment, and that should be based on case law, based on the person's particular situation, mindset, and history, not just. It's just this across the board. I don't like that. That makes me a little nervous. But that's what you get in Atlanta. Welcome to Atlanta. Now, <clears throat> this is something that um, caught my eye. It was brought up earlier. I saw it come across my um, screen on YouTube. Biden was coming to Atlanta. Now, I don't know if he made it here, but he was supposed to be coming to Morehouse. And I'm going to tell you now, our teenagers, I'm talking about they ass, these young people, they got more balls than y'all. They got more than y'all. They stand up for themselves and they said, no, nah, it's going to be a problem. You come here because you're not welcome. Okay. You're not welcome here because of your policies, how you spending our money and you took our funding back. Okay. They should have mentioned that, that he actually defunded the college funds that um, Trump had put in place. But, you know, y'all don't want to hear that. I don't care about Trump, but I'm just telling y'all what Trump did and what Biden undid. So let's watch this together. Earlier today, the White House announced that President Joe Biden will be the commencement speaker for the next month's graduation ceremony at Morehouse College. Last year, Biden gave the commencement address at another prominent HBCU, Howard University. It also comes as Biden works to shore up support in the black community that helped propel him to the White House in 2020. 
But a group of faculty yeah. members at universities across Georgia is now asking Morehouse to cancel Biden's invitation until there is a ceasefire agreement in Gaza. Thank you for saying that, because I thought you wasn't going to say why. Even though you think black people ain't paying attention to the hell that you cause across the world, allegedly, oh, we see it. And this time, we don't want to have nothing to do with it. Don't come over to us. Don't say, hey, vote for us. Don't come show your little crinkly, scrubbly face at none of our organizations. Don't come rapping. Don't come singing. Stop meeting these hip-hop artists. And even if you do meet these hip-hop artists, Democrat, Republican, Black America, you should be a damn shame for yourself because you fall for it. Look at him talking about, I'm going to go to Morehouse to visit the Blacks, even though I defunded the college. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Morehouse. I'm grateful for you standing up for yourself, having a moral compass, and actually talking about topics that is controversial because talking about war and things like that is actually what got Malcolm X and Martin Luther King killed. Because they don't want us to talk about that. They don't want, they want us to take a whole glass and shut the hell up and just pay attention to the rigmarole, the nonsense, and the entertainment. They don't want us to get into really what's going on and build international relationships. Why? Why would they do that? Then you'll have an opportunity to go somewhere else. No, no, no. We're going to make you seem like you not want to hear, but we want you. We're going to use you, take all your money, treat you like shit. And make sure you don't build no international connections. Don't talk about no damn war. Don't talk about no damn finances. Don't talk about you owning your own uh, state area. Yes, this is the message to the black people from the Democrats and Republicans. Allegedly. That's why I'm censored. But not on Rumble, baby. Okay, let's get it. I love you, Rumble. Shout out to you. YouTube just want me to put out certain things, but guess what? I'm going to put out everything. 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 All right. So, um, violent. Hold up. Violated every requirement of the settlement. Who violated every requirement of the settlement? Who are we talking about? If you want to talk about Fanny. Is this Fanny? Hold up. Let's see. Is this Fanny? Or is this somebody else? Let's see who this is. We're still talking about Georgia News. Let me get myself back on the screen. Okay. Keeping these do these topics diverse tonight. Because I had to get off this topic about Miss um, Tiffany Henry. I was over her. She ain't that special at all. Just keep throwing dirt down my throat. Which, okay. I'm sorry. Things been happening. Y'all know, y'all know Grace Levi. Y'all know I deal with the intrinsic and the praying. And it was so crazy last night. The the um <clears throat> after I did my live or whatever I did, my editing, it was all this boom, electric, like uh lightning, boom, boom. I'm like, what this is crazy. Man, I grabbed that Bible. As soon as I grabbed it, that joke was like, shh. I said, let me find out here you're gonna send the storm over here to knock a tree over at my house. Like she did, like she did out there in, in Dalton, allegedly. Allegedly. Fuck around, Tiffany. I'm a prayer warrior. I'm going to knock that ass out. I'll catch you in my dreams. I'm going to rebuke that demon in you. Okay? I know it wasn't supposed to be about her tonight, but I said something about her damn spirit that's been fucking with me. Just, ugh, girl, fucking up people's lives. All right, let's get back to Georgia News. Messed up my damn series. Okay? Talking about that lady. Crooked ass. I'm supposed to talk about you after I'm talking about uh, Fanny Willis. Fulton Jail took Guantanamo Bay, okay? But this is the most recent one before we get to that. Fulton County Jail, 100 doors not working. This was the article that came up three days ago, most recently, about Fulton County Jail. Now, this is under Fannie Willis, okay? I was excited to say it, but guess what? It seems like more than one prison system in Atlanta is stuck. It's, it's terribleness. And I think this goes, on, State lawmakers. goes across the United States. Hold on. This is a this is a problem across the United States. Y'all know that my bro bro is locked up in Jersey, and I think Jersey prisons is just as worse. But they ain't dying as fast like this. So let's go. State lawmakers had the Fulton County Jail under the microscope today. They want to find out what the problems are Ooh. with operating the facility and how the state can help. Fox News Angelique Proctor joins us from the jail with Girl. observations from state senators. Angelique. 
Let me start right here. I don't even like the statement to start off how the state can help because they already gave Fulton County hundreds of thousands of dollars. We talked about that. I don't like the way this is starting. So let's watch it. Well, good afternoon, Christine. They ask a whole lot of questions. It was actually over a couple of hours, but these Georgia senators on this subcommittee decided there's really no way around it. They say Fulton County needs a new chief. They need to shut down. Yep. These are senators asking questions, friends on both sides. We have enemies on neither side. We're here to find out what's going on. The chairman of the subcommittee on the Fulton County Jail set the ground rules early. Sheriff Patrick Labatt told the committee significant progress has been made in reducing the jail population through both outsourcing and diversionary programs for nonviolent offenders. Let's stop right there. She also got money not only to clean, fix the prison. She had another prison package to get these prisoners out of here and prosecute their cases and hire more lawyers and prosecute it in judges. It, it was money coming into Fulton County. So when they do this investigation of how the money is allocated, they're going to see that it went all over the place. Now, what I will say, what I don't like and what I'm hearing, all of this nonsense, like they're investigating her about the spending and stuff, it may lead to nowhere land. You know why? You know why? Because it's a good old boy system here. So just like how some of Dalton is set up, where Tiffany Hinger could just have a budget and kind of spend some shit and it's not directed for a specific this amount, this specific, this amount. This is how it is out here in Georgia. They'll give her a full budget from what I heard, because you know what I'm saying? I'll be listening to this. They'll give her a full budget of $3 million and she had to do what she needed to do to make the prison work. Okay? Straight like that. I promise you. So this investigation that they're doing may be not fruitless as far as future changing, that's why they put the board in place. And now they're doing the investigation to see what type of rules they can put in place about regulation of money going to prosecutors, top prosecutors and into the county in itself. To, you see what I'm saying? That's why they're having this hearing, because now they're trying to set up rules for future. But Fannie Willis, she going to get hers. She going to get hers because it's something about her that's crooked. And I know it. It's more that's going to come out about her. The, the multiple outsourcing has allowed us to do several things. One See? of which is, again, we started out at a high of during at the peak of COVID, 3,700 individuals. Today's population is 2,633. We 3,700 individuals and it's 2,633. You only got rid of 1,000 people? It's not good enough. It's not good enough. You don't need that many people sitting in jail. For what? Unless they murderers. And this is a county jail. This is not a prison. Okay? Let's just keep this in mind. We have been able to release almost 600 individuals, nonviolent individuals, Thank you. and or get them consent bonds. The sheriff says that translates into just 1,731 inmates at the main Rice Street Jail with no one sleeping on the floor. A more problematic area, however, is the dilapidated condition of the aging building. We went from top to bottom in the facility itself, and ultimately we found a thousand doors that weren't working. Six to five to six hundred toilets and, and sink combinations. Oh my working. God. So this jail Blitz project has allowed us to really focus on repairing those items. The sheriff told senators his office is not responsible for the maintenance of the jail. County officials also explained how the sheriff's office and the jail are financed. The committee concluded much of the bickering that has gone on between the sheriff and the Fulton County Commission only hurts the taxpayers. So if our sheriff's not doing his job, which looking at this case, I think he's he's working with what he has. Y'all are strapped with a terrible facility that, that needs to be maintained until a new one can be built. Listen. Repairing. Let me tell so you this Wait a thousand door. Be in a jail like this? To be in, I will never, to be in any jail, I will never, ever, ever, ever in my life do a damn crime. That's why I drive so slow out here. I, I'm trying to tell you, you even get, the, the little girl was trespassing when she died in the Fulton County Jail mm -hmm. on the school property. This is what you don't want to be in. Look at all that lead on the floor. You, <clears throat> you're sleeping 
while you have inmates walking around you. Somebody could just shank you. This is dangerous. This is very dangerous, okay? So let me give you an update. I told you I wasn't tripping. Now, we're going to look into Jackson Jail, too. We're going to keep an eye on Jackson Jail because that popped up. I honestly thought that was Fulton County that they were talking about with their first jail. So, again, I apologize because I was like, oh, that's the article that go with it. Kind of glanced at it, but it's um they violated every settlement in the Georgia jail. Now they're looking at is in the Jackson area. Okay. Now we're going to go into how Fulton County Jail has become Georgia's Guantanamo Bay. Now, this is just a little um, clip it that I'm going to show you from Atlanta News of a gentleman, uh, Court Black Backlog. And he talks about a little bit of the things that was going on. And we we went over um, the video of Fannie Willis talking. She she had a good game, a good mouth, but it is about the backlog and it is about how they're handling these particular cases. So let's watch this together. Just a few minutes of it. Look at my Atlanta dude. And Atlanta News First investigation uncovered the Anthony is one of hundreds of people inside the county jail waiting extraordinary lengths of time for their day in court. Overcrowding the jail caused by an unprecedented backlog of criminal cases. County records show as of September, at least 690 people detained more than a year in jail, 142 waiting three years, and at least 19 people waiting more than 19 people. Imagine you waiting five years in jail before you prosecuted. Imagine waiting three years, one year. This is before prosecution. This is before being found guilty. Ah, uh -uh. it seems like there's no statute of limitation. Five, that includes 61-year-old Daryl Lowe, who has waited 13 years behind bars for his trial date. None of them convicted of a crime, oh, all of them in the sheriff's custody. Fulton County Sheriff, Pat Labot. Are you frustrated when you hear these numbers? Well, I'm not frustrated. Let me tell you why I'm not frustrated. I knew when I took office, I knew when I ran for office, that the system was broken. I just didn't know how broken. The court backlog impacts more than people accused of crimes. Victims and their families suffer too. We're back on the record with State versus Jerez Sanders. This past August, Latarsia Gaither takes a seat inside a Fulton County courtroom, waiting for a verdict she worried Look at him. Y'all do they look a little remarkably familiar. You see who that judge was? That was the judge that was made. The court backlog impacts more Lewis than people Paul. accused. Disqualification hearing. That was the judge. Now we're going to break down something a little bit because this is all nepotism. This is all nepotism and they all know each other and they're friends. And that's why he should not have been over the Fannie Willis hearing. There's no way. That's why I, I don't want to have no parts of this system. I'm just driving Miss Daisy, minding my damn business, going in the middle of the night because I don't want to be caught up in this shit. This right here is crooked. Look at the judge. ...of crimes, victims and their families suffer too. We're back on the record with State versus Jerez Sanders. This past August, Latarsia Gaither takes a seat inside a Fulton County courtroom. Judge Scott McAfee. Him and Fannie Willis used to work together. I, from what I remember, Fannie Willis was over him. He should not have been over this case. Not only did he look scary and he wasn't telling people to sit down and shut up and stay focused on the topic. But they literally had a relationship that made this not right, okay? Uh, that's why I stopped talking about this because I just saw the 52 fake out and all the shenanigans. I feel like it is a show. They know that these people know each other. When Fanny was having this qualification hearing, do you know she came down Y'all remember stomping them big old legs down into the room when she wasn't even supposed to be going on the stand. They were literally in the middle of an argument to say they don't want Fannie Willis to go up there and talk this, that, and the third. And she came in there like, this is a lie. This is a lie. And I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And this is still on top of a major case. 
they, this is a wild system. Y'all not saying seeing that this is ridiculous. This is the reason why I fell back because they want us to be on an emotional roller coaster. You see how wrapped up I got about this? They want us to be on an emotional roller coaster. I watch these people make commentary about Judge McAfee, about Fannie Willis, calling her a mammy, da 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 da. All of this shit is a distraction for something that's about to happen to us or is happening to us. I'm just keeping it honest. But what I will say is that the system is broken because these two, McAfee and Fannie, he wasn't supposed to be over the case. Now, again, here he go, right in the middle of this documentary, dealing with Fulton County jails, the jails that Fannie Willis is under, over. Or will be under. How the hell about that? What if she end up in her own jail? From waiting for a verdict she worried would never happen. Facing Duress Sanders, accused of killing her longtime boyfriend, Timothy Jackson, and two others at this home in 2013. I needed justice to move on. I need this to move on. Latarsia is the one who found Timothy dead inside. You go down the hallway, there's a bedroom to your left, and, um, the two bedrooms. She testified against her own son. Oh Lord, this is difficult. <laughs> I wouldn't win. This went to the left. This is this is something differently different. Is that on um, my worst enemy? Finding somebody that that you love and care about with their head blown off like that. That took a lot from me. It, it destroyed oh, this right a jury found i don't want to get into that because it's distracting me i'm like oh that that's some to the left i know we're getting into disturbing news but whoo that's some family drama okay so let's get into a little bit of fanny willis that was this was the interview that she did running her damn mouth look at it what they would like to do is to paint a scapegoat for inaction look all that damn makeup on her face looking like tiffany Henyard that they've taken it is unconscionable the way that our jail is mm -hmm. they've known our jail is in that state people need to be in safe conditions but does the da's office contribute to the problem according to records from the county clerk's office this past summer there were 1232 people inside the jail who have yet to be indicted about 60 of them waiting more than a year people now formally charged with the crime waiting for district attorney Fani willis's office to take the case to a grand jury to determine charges but she has enough prosecutors on the trump case and prosecutors on the young thug case do you know how many prosecutors are in and out of that uh case with young thug it's at least i at least saw like okay i know definitely know it's the two women and it's about three men four men so it's about six prosecutors on a young thug case alone and all the resources that has to be used to orchestrate it oh my god the evidence alone the review of the witnesses do you know how much funds that take in time and billing hours this is what Fannie willis is doing while her presence is looking like this this is ridiculous while they sit behind bars people need to be timely indicted That's right. timely tried and given the opportunity to force the state to prove its case atlanta criminal defense attorney andrew fleischman criticized the da on twitter earlier this year writing willis has been keeping people in jail without trial or even indictment for years oh right street has become our very own gitmo fleischman comparing the county jail to the guantanamo bay detention camp in cuba which has held suspected 9-11 terrorists without trial for decades. Wow. You are holding people for long periods of time without charging them with a crime or giving them due process. And that's exactly what happened at Gitmo. That in particular should be a high level point of frustration. This past September, Fulton County Commissioner Bob Ellis raised the issue during a meeting, upset more progress had not been made after allocating $75 million in federal pandemic aid to address it. They know, bro, all them, prison, them prisoners in there, like, look, these are the people. There you go, right here. So obviously there's some things that's moving, some mechanics, some things in the inside movement in Georgia and in Atlanta, Fulton County, because that board, 
that boy in October, when them when them lines open up, all them prisoners' family members is gonna be on there talking about we need to get her out of here. We're gonna have to get uh Fanny looked at for our our family's case. So watch Pandora's box is gonna open. Now let's get a little bit more into what's going on. Miss Fanny Willis. Yes, I'm gonna have to give y'all a little update, even though I know people be giving y'all update. But we I'm just trying to get you get you get a clear picture of what's going on with our friend right here. Georgia appeals courts grants hearing to remove Fannie Willis from Trump indictment. So they're re-looking at this again because obviously they realized that that was her friend that couldn't pull her ass off. And he like, well, the black man, I don't know. Fuck him. Well, she taught me some, some stuff. That was my man, man. I couldn't get her off the case. But now... The Georgia Court of Appeals grants a hearing to remove Fanny from the case. Okay, they're going to revisit this again. More breaking news right now at noon. The Georgia Court of Appeals giving former President Trump a victory, agreeing to hear a challenge to a ruling that allowed Fulton County DA Fawny Willis to remain on the 2020 election meddling case. This is tied to Willis's romantic relationship with a former special prosecutor, the judge allowing Willis to stay on as long as the prosecutor, Nathan Wade, left the team, which happened. Trump's lawyers have 10 days from today to file their appeal. It will be heard in August. All right. So this was as of two days ago. Let me see if I, I have another article. I mean, another video up there. Let me see if they see. They say something a little different. You know, they probably add a little bit more. This one is brought to you by ABC News, Georgia court to take up Trump appeal on Fannie disqualification. So did he already file it? He said, hell yeah. Same day. Same day, Peggy. I'm not about to play with this one right here. Trump is a busy ass man. I ain't never see somebody in so many courts in different states and trying to run for a president. He old as hell and he is on the go. I'm going to just be honest. Some breaking news. A Georgia appeals court has now agreed to take up the Trump team's appeal of the Fonnie Willis disqualification ruling. Now, a lower court had already ruled that Willis can remain on that case. So what happens there now? So the, the, the Trump team wants to appeal the decision. They would like Fonnie Willis kicked off the case entirely. Uh, the judge has ruled that Fonnie Willis could stay as long as her former paramour, Nathan Wade, uh, was removed from the case to avoid even the appearance uh, of any kind of a conflict. So he's off the case. Fonnie Willis is on. Uh, the appellate court has agreed to take up the matter. They haven't, you know, agreed to any decision, but they've at least agreed to take it up, which is yet one more delay for a case that still does not have a, a date to start trial. Uh so, Khan, what does this do, this, these delays do, given we're six months away from the election now? I think, Diane, that's a great question. And ultimately what it does is it guarantees that the only case that's going to trial out of these three criminal cases, the, one uh, the documents case, the Fannie uh, Willis case, uh, January 6th case, it is ultimately the case that's now uh, before uh, the judge and, and jury in New York State. I knew it. The one in New York, that one is going tell full in. She going after him too. I don't know what's wrong with these women. They just need to mind their business. I'm trying to tell you they didn't put themselves in a bad situation. I, I'm being honest. Okay. And Aaron, looking back at the criminal hush money trial now, Stormy Daniels was one of the key witnesses in this case, right? Her and, and Michael Cohen uh, are arguably the two big names that we're looking to hear from. So now that she has had this testimony, what do you expect to happen next? Well, she's going to be back on Thursday for more cross-examination, and already she has conceded she hates Donald Trump, and she wants to see him held accountable. The defense attorney, Susan Necklace, asked her, you want to see him go to jail? And she said, I want to see him held accountable, and if that means jail, then, then, then so be it. Uh, she has also tried to resist the idea, though, that she was out to extort him. Remember, mm -hmm. Donald Trump denies a sexual encounter ever happened. The defense has suggested that Stormy Daniels has been making money, dining out on this story for, for a decade, and, and it, it amounts to extortion of President Trump. She has resisted that, but I expect that's the tack the defense is going to resume when she gets back on the witness stand uh, on Thursday. And Diane, the, the... 
I don't know how we start talking about some damn Stormy, Stormy Daniels. They, they, you see how they just slide that on there? Nobody care about that stuff. Nobody care about that. Okay, so let's get into another update about Fannie Willis. We don't care about no damn Stormy Daniels. All we care about is, is they going to hear that case again? Why did they leave her on the case? Why is even Fulton participating in big cases, high state cases, when they cannot even take care of their prisoners? They are literally holding people without even being prosecuted. This shit is like literally the Patriot Act on crump. Okay, that's what's happening here. The Patriot Act that people were scared of is happening in Georgia, dog. Okay, now another fire under Fannie Willis. It's okay. Watch eleven. This was about ten days ago. My my um inbox been full, y'all. State lawmakers from Atlanta suing DA Fannie Willis. Why the why? Tell me why. Girl, busy, busy woman. See, as I told you, I won't want no position like this to be all in this shit. It's too much. It is too much drama. Yeah, listen to this. Prosecuting Attorney's Qualifications Commission is evident due to the actions of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. My lawsuit against Fonnie Willis, Marvin Arrington, mm -hmm. and the Fulton County Ethics Board stems from this necessity. Stalking often misunderstood involves repeated unwanted behavior causing fear or distress. It's a serious issue affecting millions annually with most victims knowing they're stalkers. The Netflix documentary, Can I Tell You a Secret, sheds light on this issue. Stalking behaviors include harassment, intimidation, and even violence. Despite its prevalence, misconceptions persist hindering support for victims. Stalkers exploit various tactics from relentless calls to spreading rumors. They often target former partners and engage in oh, something called from sending you money. Stalkers will repeatedly stop. Wow, we talk if you about ignore that. it, they will stop. Chief Jailer of the Fulton oh, County that. Jail on behalf of my stalker and the criminal behavior of other elected officials, past and present, is discussed on these jail calls. Despite Ooh. presenting numerous witnesses, DA Willis contacted no one. DA Willis and ADA Yolanda Mack admitted awareness of judges favoring Commissioner Arrington. Uh -oh. She never fought for me as a victim, a Fulton County resident. She was always in the pocket of the commissioner and retaliated against me after I contacted the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Violence Against Women because DA Willis repeatedly allowed my stalker to be released on bond for non-bondable crimes. Wait a minute. How are you letting people out and you let this person out, but you got all them other people that didn't get prosecuted or even charged with anything in the jail? Pay to play. Allegedly. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What we got going on around here? And failed to notify me of court proceedings repeatedly. Mm. She never mentioned to the court her conflict of interest and that was she was discussing my case with her close family friend and my stalker's attorney, Commissioner Marvin Arrington, before oh, she was even sworn into office. That. The Georgia Democrat Party's decision to grant a convicted felon previously jailed for one year for aggravated stalking allowing him access to voter data poses a serious risk to every Fulton woman. Campaign software driven by GPS data exposes private information of registered voters without considering the implications of allowing unqualified individuals on the ballot. Mm -mm -mm. Today, accountability is paramount, especially with the Fulton County DA failing to assist citizens affected by domestic violence, stalking or unjust incarceration let's stop right here so it sounds like this lady is kind of accusing her of not only election interference by putting people who are not qualified on the ballot i mean to you know be part of reading the numbers 
But this person was actually a sex offender. And she had some encounter with this person's case, lawyer, and discussed it outside of court. Hot diggity dog, damn. This lady is crooked, allegedly. This is what I just wanted to show you. We're going to follow this. I want to look more deep into this. This young lady is suing Fanny for not protecting her, for not updating her about the status of her stalker, as well as literally violating the terms of the case by discussing this case with her family, with the attorney, if she was the prosecutor. You can discuss with the attorney, but it's certain limitations that you're supposed to have. And you obviously, you know, Fanny Willis ain't got no limitations. She up in church talking about, yeah, they they chose me because I was black. They hate me because I'm black, not because I'm going after Trump, mm, just because I'm black or not because I was sleeping with my uh, co-worker. Or no, she don't see with coworkers. She sleeps with contractors, okay? Mm -hmm. And giving them over five hundred thousand dollars pay, way more than any other lawyer in Fulton County has got in that fiscal year. Yeah, I was paying attention, y'all. I just wasn't able to talk about it. After a while, it just turned me the hell off. I was just like, I'm over this right here because this right here is crookedness, and we have too many black women in the hot seat right now. That's misrepresenting who we are. And it is so sad. Yes. Welcome to Uncensored Enlightenment Talk. And you're here with your host, Grace Levi. Yes, yes, yes. So we coming in a little bit spicy today. You see how we came in a little heavy. So you already know that we're going to be hitting you with a few heavy topics today. It's not going to be light and bright. Okay. I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody take the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Well, who's I swear? I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.